also working on the Kennedy miniseries, is that right? Yeah, so now, now in, in a couple of weeks, uh, I leave for Toronto where we're shooting it. And uh, I'm working on, I would gl easily say, some of the best scripts I've ever read. Absolutely fantastic scripts. It's an eight-hour miniseries. Uh, I'm very happy to be working with the same guys from 24 again. I'm working with Joel Cernal, who's executive producing with me, and uh, Steve Cronish, who wrote it. Uh, Steve has been sort of a, a fanatic about the whole JFK and, and the killing from the assassination from way back when he was a teenager and has this unheralded or un, uh, unrivaled library of, of the Kennedys and so has written this unbelievably good miniseries right. and I've, I've decided with their permission of course to direct all eight of them so it's going to be a huge challenge and, and uh and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really kind of fun to do. Any idea on a release date on that one? I think they're going January. Uh, I think January. January, obviously not this year, of 11. Oh, 11. Uh, and that's, I think it coordinates with, I think, the inauguration of JFK. I yeah. think it's the anniversary of that. So I think they're trying to, and it's a history channel. And so that's also exciting because they've never played in this world before. They've only done, obviously, documentaries. And so this is completely new to them. And, and which is nice in a way because it's a little hands off from their point of view. They've sort of, you know, looked at us and said, look, you guys know what you're doing, go do it. And so to have that kind of freedom is also incredibly exciting for me. So, and I've never done a, I've never done a, a, a true story. It's my first in a long career. You know, if you're in the world of one hour drama, you don't do true stories, you just don't. And so it's my first time doing that. So that's kind of interesting. Whole different set of, you know, things that you have to do with the research and the wardrobe and the hair and the, and the character. And so it's kind of fun to, to be playing in that world. Yeah, look forward to that one. Um, favorite film of 2009? Favorite film of 2009. <laughs> Do I have that on my website? I do. I, I, I never do one. I can't do one. Okay, They're all so different. Uh, I love District 9. Yeah. I loved Star Trek. Yeah. I love State of Play. Mm -hmm. I thought State of Play was absolutely fantastic. Zombieland, believe it, is, is in there. Fantastic. Uh, what did I see recently? I saw a couple of good ones. And, and Education, I thought was really fantastic. I always judge films by what they set out to do. That's why Zombieland's on the list. And I think from last year, House Bunny is on there. And everyone goes, House Bunny? What the hell? It's because they set out to make that film. And they, they did a great job doing it. And so, you know, those, those, are, those are my favorite. What did you think of Avatar? Oh, Avatar, of course. Yeah. Avatar, yeah. I forget the recent ones. I'm thinking of my website page. Yeah. I haven't put Avatar up there yet, but absolutely. Again, not the greatest story ever. It's been done. You know, my kids keep... My younger son jokes and calls it Fern Gully. You know, it's like that <laughs> animated film. It's exactly the same story. But but as far as doing what a, what a big movie should, which is immersing you in a new world, there's nothing like it. I, I, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, whether you like that world or not, that's a whole sort of other argument. And that world wasn't my cup of tea. But as far as being totally immersed in it and saying you've gone to another planet and you're living with these people for a while, it was unbelievable. I just thought it was groundbreaking, you know, groundbreaking movie making. It really was. Uh, and then Inglorious Bastards I liked and I liked The Hurt Locker also. So those are all, you know, those are all great films. Uh, District 9, I think, was one of them. District my 9 is definitely one of my really favorites. Really I just saw it. And again, with the little money they had and, and, and no, no lead, you know, no actors. Yeah. In fact, you know, putting Brad Pitt in a movie like that, nothing against Brad Pitt, I think he's a great actor, but takes you out of it, you know, and, and having this guy that no one had ever seen before, you know, was just fantastic. Well, he played a nobody it's, in the film as well. And that's so he played a it. nobody in the film, yeah. you know. And a lot of times what Hollywood do, they put like, you know, they put a big actor in there. You'd have Tom Cruise playing a nobody, and it's just it's not believable yeah, anymore, nobody, you know. Yeah. Their, their celebrity has kind of made that very hard for them to play those kind of roles so sure. to actually have a nobody playing a nobody brilliant mm -hmm. you know and it made the film I think as good as, as it was and then the effects were great the story was very timely in, in its shadow of what's happening yeah. there in yeah. Africa the fact that I was there you know in Africa yeah. and saw those places gave me a connection to it so I, I just thought it was brilliant really really good and the most anticipated film of 2010 oh that's interesting I think Iron Man, I got, you know, I, I like a John Favreau, one, yeah. I worked with John Favreau way back when he was an actor and I was a, I was a camera operator. I've always liked him and kind of followed his, his rise and uh, he's just making good movies now. Yeah. He's just, 
he's just the kind of director I, you know, I would hope to be in when I get to the feature world, making really sort of audience-driven films. And just the clips I've seen of Iron Man 2 looks great. And and I'm not a big, you know, if you notice the, the films I like, rarely will you see a superhero movie in there because I just, first of all, I find that the first film usually is, is kind of interesting because the best part about a superhero is him trying to figure out what his powers are. It was the best part about Spider-Man, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I find after that, every sequel becomes, I got yeah. more powers than you, I got to beat a bigger <laughs> bad guy, and I'm bored. I mean, I'm just yeah. I'm not interested anymore. So I'm hoping that Iron Man somehow fights that. I don't know how. Uh, and the other great thing about Iron Man, he's the only guy I want to be. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be Batman. He's like way too troubled, and yeah. I really want to, don't want to be Spider-Man and have to deal with this. I mean, but Iron <laughs> Man, I, I could be, I could be Tony Stark. I, I think he's got it made, man. He's got he's that, he's got that the house. Cars, he's got the girls. Money. He's got the cars. I mean, I don't know. I could be Tony Stark. I think nice. it's pretty, pretty. Fun, be nice to have his workshop. So it? I'd love to just exactly right. I would just live with his workshop and his house. Yeah. I'd be happy with that. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. I, love the, I, so. I agree. I'm not a huge fan of. Steve hero movies but that, with the exception of Batman's probably that one yeah it was really, it was really, really standard yeah, it was. And, and it had a great sense of humor yeah. you know which which obviously John Favreau and Robert Downey bring to it I'm hoping and from the clips alone you can tell that sense of humor is still there yeah. because quite honestly it's a superhero movie yeah. it's a comic book we were kids I mean comic books were designed for kids I know they've grown away from that but there's still that that great fun that 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 comic books give you that somehow these movies shouldn't lose and some of them have started to lose it you know they've got too serious for their own good yeah. and so Iron Man just kind of went backwards a little bit for me to being a comic book and it was fun to watch I really enjoyed it Great stuff. We've run out of questions. Yeah. <laughs> but great answers. I stumped the guy. That's got to be. Fun. Well, thanks, guys. You're great. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. And a pleasure and, uh, to meet you finally. Pleasure to meet you guys. Pleasure and thanks for coming you. to my world. Thank Thank you. You. All right. Take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.